Today, we're gonna to go through each team in the NFC North and pick out one player that I believe is currently undervalued in fantasy football, someone that I think will finish above their average draft position or their ADP in fantasy football drafts. Now, if you watched yesterday's video, this is a series we're gonna cover every single division. Yesterday, we covered the AFC North. We talked about the Steelers, Bengals, Ravens, and Browns. But today, we are talking about the NFC North. We're talking about the Lions, talking about the Packers, Vikings, and of course, the Chicago Bears. But subscribe to the channel if you are new. We appreciate everyone that's subscribing to the channel. We got a lot of fantasy football and NFL content coming your way. If you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, you've seen our 10 future bets, talked about our five breakout stars, three deep sleeper running backs, a lot of content coming your way. So subscribe to the channel. We've also got some exciting things coming your way. We have a weekly survivor pool that you guys will want to enter. And we got a weekly DFS tournaments every single week. So we're competing against the call on our shot community and we'll shout you out on the podcast. But let's talk about some football. And first, I got travel to Detroit. All right, we are in Detroit, and you know, if you've watched my 10 Future Bets video, you know I'm not necessarily the biggest Detroit Lions fan, at, at least for this season, as I picked their under and wins. But today, we're gonna talk about some of their players. Now, I could talk about TJ Hawkinson, and he was gonna be the player I thought was undervalued in fantasy football, but sadly, I went on, and he's tight end six. That's currently what he's being drafted. Pick 61 in your normal snake drafts. Then you look at the next tight ends. Logan Thomas, tight end seven, pick 80. Dallas Goddard, tight end eight, pick 92. And I believe there's a marginal value between Hawkinson to Logan Thomas to Dallas Goddard and I don't think it's worth taking you know taking that uh, TJ Hawkinson all the way up here but then having you know you could wait a couple rounds and get a Logan Thomas I think there's better skill positions among the other groups and I think you could drop down to like a Logan Thomas or Dallas Goddard and you're talking about a drop from like a Cooper Cup Jamar Chase or Brandon Ayuk to someone like Cortland Sutton or Chase Claypool with a lot of question marks and then I wanted to think about all right let's talk about the running backs now a lot of, a lot of people are high on DeAndre Swift but They've been pretty non-committal. So the player I believe will outperform their ADP, Jamal Williams. So currently, you know, he's not necessarily the high, highest draft running back out there. I believe he's like ADP 40 and pick, who knows, 140. But I think he's got a good chance. And the, obviously he's coming from the Packers. The Lions brought him in for two years, around $6 million. We've talked about him in other videos as a deep running back sleeper. This is a guy that's had played four career NFL seasons, had 100 plus carries in every single year, 25 plus receptions in all four years. Swift. Never been a true workhorse back. You saw the Lions, his rookie year, non-committal. He started to turn on towards the end of the year, but there's no guarantee he can handle a full workload. Now you look at Jamal Williams. He stepped in and filled for Aaron Jones very nicely as Aaron Jones has missed a couple games here and there throughout the past couple years. And you've seen Jamal Williams go from, like no one's talking about him, boom, to a top waiver claim just because of Aaron Jones being out. And he filled in. Now, Aaron Jones, or Jamal Williams, very undervalued. And the live draft trends, you can see on the screen, he's trending higher and higher, 8.6 spots higher than he was last week. Now, let's look at the guys around him. You got a guy like Trey Sermon, who's out in San Francisco. That backfield's crowded, hard path for him to get to touches, get on the field. Naheem Hines, same exact thing. Devin Singletary, the Bills don't run the ball. Same for Zach Moss. J.D. McKissick, who was very inefficient with all of his touches last year. Tony Pollard, he's gonna need Zeke Elliott to get injured. I'm just not in. I think I think you got a good chance here with Jamal Williams. He's gonna have a consistent workload. You got Ronald Jones. He's in that weird backfield with Leonard Fournette in Tampa. James Conner, who's always injured. There's a lot more question marks there. Whereas Jamal Williams, you know what you're getting out of him. He's not gonna necessarily, he might not win you your league, but he is a high floor, high ceiling kind of guy. If, if, if DeAndre Swift does go down with an injury, you never know. You see Jamal Williams creep up to that, you know, top, top 20 running backs, which would not surprise me. Look at the last four years. In 2020, he finishes RB38. 2019, RB34, 2018, RB44, and 2017, RB32. I think he finishes the season closer to RB30. And that's if, and if, if Swift does get injured, he's a borderline top 20 RB every single week. Now, I'm not wishing an injury upon DeAndre Swift, but I think Jamal Williams gives you a lot of value and will be someone that finishes above his ADP. Now, moving on to a guy I've mentioned in previous videos, his former teammate of Jamal Williams, AJ Dillon. Currently running back 39 in terms of rankings, ADP. 140. Now, I think this guy's outperforming his ADP, and I could talk about him all day. The quad father, quadzilla. He was in my three deep sleeper running back video. It will be linked at the end of the video. Now, Jamal Williams barely, or AJ Dillon barely saw any touches in his rookie year. He had only had 46 carries, 242 yards, and two touchdowns but 5.3 yards per carry. Now, no Jamal Williams, who had 119 carries last year. A.J. Dillon will absorb a good amount of that. And he is an, A.J. Dillon is an, an Aaron Jones injury away from being a top 10 running back 
and I think he's got a good chance. Now, we talked about, you know, Jamal Williams has a DeAndre Swift injury away from being a top 10 running back or top 20 running back. AJ Dillon has an even higher ceiling, which is why I like him a little more. He's very Nick Chubb-esque, Nick Chubb of the Cleveland Browns, which we'll talk, we talked about them yesterday. Now, you got, you got A.J. Dillon. He's big. He's a big boy. Now, the one game that he got a lot of usage, which he didn't see, he saw less than five carries every single game of the regular season his rookie year. Now, he did have one game last season with, tw with more than five carries. What did he do? This was without Jamal Williams, without Aaron Jones. He had 21 carries, 124 yards, and two touchdowns. More opportunity will come this year, and I think A.J. Dillon will make the most of it. And who knows? You can be coming for Aaron Jones Aaron Jones' job one of these days. Probably not this year, but you never know. Now, let's talk about these last two teams. We're going to talk about the Vikings, talk about the Bears. Now, we'll be maybe, who knows where I'm on on the green screen. Now, I could come here and talk about Dalvin Cook. Hey, he's underdrafted. Well, he's running back two or three in drafts. Now, I'm not talking about Kirk Cousins, who's relatively useless in fantasy football, unless you're talking about two QB leagues. Now, I could talk about Adam Thielen, who I believe is due for some touchdown regression. He had 14 touchdowns last year. That's ridiculous. Now, I could talk about the Bears side of things. I could talk about Justin Fields, who's being drafted as QB 18, and who knows where he lands. Now, if you want to put him on, his, on your bench as a sleeper, maybe like a Justin Herbert from last year, we could see something very similar to that for for Justin Fields, but you just don't know when he could get the starting shot, job position. Or I could talk about David Montgomery, who I'm really high on, but he's running back 15. So I want to go with two guys, or Cole Komet, Darnell Mooney, who's like wide receiver 56 in terms of drafts. So instead, I'm going to take a chance to talk about the two wide receiver studs on each team, Justin Jefferson and Allen Robinson. Now, let's start with Jefferson. Currently, wide receiver 8, ADP, pick number 26. Obviously, Allen Robinson, wide receiver 11, ADP 36. These guys are barely separated, only by a round. Now, of course, it doesn't take a rocket scientist for me to tell you, hey, you should draft Justin Jefferson if you have the chance in your league. I mean, he was absolute stud. Wide receiver six last year in terms of points. And then if you separate the first two weeks when the Vikings just didn't feel like using the guy, I mean, he was a rookie, so you can't blame him for using not using him too much the first two weeks of his NFL career. Go weeks three to 17, he was wide receiver four. He's an absolute stud. And I think Thielen will regress. He's going to be 31 by the start of the season. Had 14 touchdowns last year. I think some of those touchdowns could go over to Justin Jefferson. 88 catches, 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns in 2020. He's built a good rapport with Kirk Cousins. Now, I am a little bit concerned, not too concerned about the AC uh, joint sprain that he had in practice a couple days ago, but he should be fine. Dynamic playmaker. Vikings defense still won't be that good. They will be playing from behind in some games. I like Justin Jefferson to continue, and he's well worth that drop, top draft pick that you're going to be wasting on him. Allen Robinson, one round later, wide receiver 11, ADP, number 36. Now, I much prefer him over Mike Evans in the same spot. Him and CeeDee Lamb kind of go head and head in my rankings. But I think Allen, he doesn't have to fight for a target share like maybe a CD Lamb does on the Cowboys. He's going to dominate it. He had the seventh most targets in 2020, the sixth highest target share at, at over 26%. Mike Evans, on the other hand, only 18%. He had his first season with 100 plus receptions. He had 102 total receptions, 1,250 yards, six touchdowns. I think this team and this offense will be much better. He's in this contract situation with the Bears that is really, really interesting. And I think he's going to go out there, ball out, and demand either a contract or to be traded at some point because he, he definitely deserves it. He's a bona fide number one. Double digit PPR points last year in 14 of 16 games. He wasn't injured really at all last year. And they're going to have better QB play as Foles and Trubisky are both out of town. Mike Evans versus Alex. Alan Robinson, you know I'm going with Allen Robinson. I've already talked about it. Not to bash Mike Evans or say I don't really like him that much, although there's several receivers I prefer over him. Mike Evans just didn't have a big target share, and he had 14, I believe 13 touchdowns actually last year. And now I know Tom Brady. He's Tom Brady. He's the GOAT. But they didn't have a full season with Antonio Brown, so I'm not necessarily thinking that Mike Evans is going to duplicate what he did all of last year. So I'm going to take Allen Robinson if I have the choice between both of them. Now that'll do it for the NFC North. Next Monday, we're going to cover the AFC South. But we're going to keep moving forward through every single division. Now, tomorrow, we've got an exciting video. Three top 20 running backs for you guys to avoid in your fantasy football drafts. These are going to be the top running back studs that I'm necessarily a little skeptical, don't love their ADP at the moment. Then on Friday, we're going to be talking about 10 sleeper fantasy football receivers. But for now, you're going to have to deal with this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Check out our fantasy football videos popping up on the screen, as well as like the video we did for this same exact concept for the AFC North, as well as my five breakout fantasy football stars this season. This has been awesome. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.